Hi, welcome to Entrepreneur on a Dime brought to you by Mommy Income. I am Kristen Ostrander. And I'm Amy Fearman. And this week we are going to be chatting about how to handle sales slumps in your Amazon business. Or in Happy any business, Amazon. really. Sorry. She's jumping on me already. Yeah. <laughs> She's excited to talk about this because guys, it happens in any business, any retail business, you're going to have sales slumps. And we want to talk through the things that we can help you do so that they're not going to be as drastic or what to do if they are happening to you. And other than that, we really want to get into helping you uh, understand a couple of things about um, sales slumps. First of all, just like Amy said, this is going to happen to everyone. It always happens. No matter what kind of business that you own, no matter what kind of things, you are never going to see this. You might see this for a time, but all of a sudden there's just going to be this. There's ups and downs. It's a roller coaster. It's in and out. And so we want to make sure what do we do in the meantime with sales slumps. So we've got a lot of things for you. Don't forget show notes. Yep. We have show notes for this week's show. If you go to mommyincome.com slash slow during the show, you will actually be able to click on a button and download them instantly to your computer. Actually, it'll bring up a PDF. Um, I'll put the link in here. Oh, uh, faster you. than me today. Oh, Kristen's got links before me. When does that happen? Never. Don't count <laughs> on that. <laughs> All right. So we want you guys to really be able to pay attention to what we're saying and listen to what we have. We've got a lot of tonight's content in the show notes. So download them, print them out, take notes on them, whatever you need to really digest this information. Okay. So right out of the gate, number one hang in there because this happens to everybody. So that's like just clue number one. First, everybody do this with me. It's going to be super cheesy, right? Okay. Just like deep breath and out. Guess what? You're really normal. Your store's normal. Your e-commerce is normal. The sky is not falling. Everybody has slow times and sales slumps. It doesn't mean that Amazon or eBay or whatever platform you sell on is broken or has blacklisted you or whatnot. It means that sales are slow. And we've, we've all heard the summer sales myth that summer sales are always slower than the rest of the year. It depends on what you sell. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But hang in there if it's happening to you, whether it lasts a couple days. If you're just starting out and you hit a week's worth of $0 days, been there, done that, know how it feels. Um, we're going to give you some tips of what you can do while you're in that space. Okay. So yeah, slow sales are very normal. Um, and you know, you don't always see up, down, up, you know, it, yeah, even Chris in the chat right now is saying his thrift shop was down the past month compared to last year. Well, that really just happens. Sometimes our lowest month last year is actually one of our highest months this year so far. Last year, April wasn't the greatest for us for some reason. And this year, I, I couldn't believe my, my eyes. And then May just wasn't that sexy. We're like, May, what happened to you? Can you come back? Where's my sales? But then by the end of the month, things kind of recovered. So if you, this is your first year in business, this is your first year in, in that, just, just take ease to know you're not doing anything wrong. Well, you might be after you read some of our show notes today, we'll see if there is something you're doing wrong. We're here to help you correct it. But in the meantime, you have to realize it's not just going to be all this huge upward spiral. There's going to be ups and downs. So it's completely normal. And we've got a lot of tips for you to be able to beat this sales slump and get your stuff moving again, or just troubleshoot and things like that. All right. But the first thing I want to say to you guys is the first thing you won't do we're not going to talk about this right now, is the first thing, you, you're not going to drop your prices. That's where everybody goes, oh my gosh, I need to make sales. I need money right now. My sales are down. I'm going to drop my prices. That's a no, no, no. We're not even going to talk about that right now. Just write it down. Do not lower prices first. That's not the first thing you do. Okay. We're going to do all these other things first and then we will talk about lowering prices because that, that is a reality. There might be something there, but let's do all these other things first. So first things first is to check your listings. So you want to look at your listings. If you're having, everybody's going to get that panic moment. You know, I even had it at one point this week where I'm just like this, 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 and this is not moving like it was last week. What is going on and looking? And these are the things that we do to keep our sales moving. So we're not just little talking heads over here. We have legit Amazon business is we sell every single day. It's, it's our main source of income. So these are just things we do, we've been doing to make sure that we 
kick our sales slump in the behind and get it moving. So check your listings. First and foremost, this has been my number one thing to check is bad images. The first thing a buyer sees when they do a search is the images. It's the first thing our eyes are drawn to as buyers. So if your image is poor quality, if it's low resolution, if it is hard to figure out what they're going to get, they're less likely to kick, click through on that listing to be able to see more information to really understand what they're getting. So first off, Make sure your images are good. Kristen told a story a couple weeks ago about a bundle that in the image was orange instead of red for a holiday that was very red focused. Yeah, it was bad. And so I went in and I'm like, hey, then why isn't this, this bundle is selling, which is very relative to this built bundle. Why isn't this one moving? I looked at the image and realized it looked orange. And I'm like, no, this has to be fixed. Pulled some stock photos from the manufacturer, changed up the picture, and bam, it moved instantly. It was literally a very easy fix that I could have avoided. So lo when looking at those things, make sure you check for bad images. And if it's not your listing, then you can go to Amazon Seller Central, pull up the ASIN and say, look, I don't think that this, <clears throat> here, let me give the right verbiage for you. This image is, does not comply with uh, Amazon's policies for images. I would like to offer a replacement image. Here is what I have to offer. And make sure, make darn sure that your image is way better than the one there because Amazon's all about making sure the customer gets what they need and what they want. So making sure you do that, offer them this new image. I have not been turned down yet, especially when bad images are the front image. Amazon doesn't want that either. So offer up an image, get it a stock photo, get it the right size, remove the background, if you must if you don't have like some sort of stock photo and then send it to Amazon and say this is doesn't comply with your policies this one does please replace it and they will right opening cases with Amazon for various different things we'll talk about that in a couple different points tonight is a stopping block for some people but it actually helps your business if you're in a sales slump and something's not moving that you really think should be take the time and the effort to go through each of these steps and do that um, another one is missing information if you're listing, I know that I was selling, I think it was a tablecloth, random, I know, um, a tablecloth and there you can get rectangular, you can get circular. So there was no information in this listing at all about what size tablecloth you were going to be getting, what shape. And so I was like, okay, we're going to tweak this up, change, because it wasn't in the title, it wasn't anywhere. I'm going to change the title, boom. You put the size in and all of a sudden it starts selling because people know what they're getting. Absolutely. Listing errors. And that's missing information and listing errors. So especially for you newbies, if you're new and you haven't been selling, selling that long and you don't have that many things for sale, go through your listings and look at things that might have errors or missing. Like that was just a simple shape or the other one was a simple color of an image that was just bad. Look through it and make sure all the details and then you can always submit a case. Now sometimes Amazon asks you for proof. So if you're trying to update the size or whatever, then you can pull that from the manufacturer's website like Amy did and just basically say, according to this UPC, this is an oblong 60 by 40 tablecloth, whatever it is I'm making this stuff up, but you know, you can go to, you can type in your UPC for that product on Google and you can find updated stats and then you can post that as your proof. So open cases, especially those that are very new that you have more time than you have money and you're worried about sales. You have time to go through your listings. If you only have, you know, 10 SKUs, you have plenty of time to go through 10 SKUs and make sure that all this stuff is there. And let's talk about ASIN mer mergers. Oh, ASIN mergers. Those things drive me nuts. <laughs> and ASIN mergers are actually good. So sometimes somebody else has created a listing that is exactly the same as one that already exists. And that muddies the catalog. Amazon doesn't like that. Um, and oftentimes you'll see something that is $3 less than the other bundle. And you can actually ask Amazon to merge those two together so they become one. So you're not having two listings that are competing against each other. It's all one listing with sellers on it competing against each other. 
And this can happen to not only with bundles, but the single items, you know, say you've got like Hawaiian tropic, you know, suntan lotion, and it's a 16 ounce size. And then this person has the exact same thing. And they're one of them's doing terribly and one of them's doing good. And you list yours on the we accidentally scanned yours in on the wrong one. And the, and the sales rank is, you know, 500,000 in healthcare or whatever. You don't want that. The other one's at, you know, 100,000 and whatever the case may be. But you know what I'm saying. And so you can request that and say, this is identical. These two items are identical. Can you please merge the ASINs? It's not going to mess with your back end. We've had these, this thing happen to us several times. So just don't be afraid to contact seller support. Don't be afraid. You know, the, what's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is they're like, no, sorry, we're not doing that. And then you're no worse off than you were 10 minutes ago. Right. And one last thing in this is check for stranded inventory. Um, this ca can happen if, your something if you're using something like inventory at lab and something goes wrong on the back end you can land with inventory with inventory that's sitting there that's not actually live for sale so if you have an item that you sent in you're like i sent in 20 of that why am i not getting sales of that it had a really great rank check your listings to see if it actually is stranded and not actually live for selling and sometimes you'll see it's says it's live in your account but it's not showing up on the the product page guess what you need to open a case because this product says it's live but it's not showing up on the page so can you help me out here to get this moving um and sometimes it's a glitch in amazon system and you just need to let them know that it's happening and they'll fix it for you remember this is your truth moment nobody is going to monitor your business but you so if you don't monitor it amazon and you can't just sit back and be all hunky-dory you could be lowering a price on something you didn't even check the listing for that's not a good idea. Pay attention to your business. You need to pay attention to your business. Now, I, that is a true story, what Amy just said. I checked something today that I thought would instantly sell out at the warehouse. It's a discontinued item. I got my hands on some of them. I did a little bit of RA a, few, a, week, or, or a week or so ago, and I sent in these items, and I'm like, this is going to fly. This is going to fly. The price is outrageous. This is a great thing. And I was like, uh, it it's not selling what's going on. And I lit literally looked and it was a stranded item and it had something to do with the ASIN that wasn't right. And, you know, I corrected it instantly and sold out today. So good for me. Uh, it works. This stuff works. So if you're <laughs> having this sales slump, like legit, this is what we do with our business and what you should be doing. So monitor your listings, look at them. Even if you didn't create them, you still have some authority to try to take care of um, issues. So yeah. Images, listing errors, missing information, agent mer ASIN mergers, and checking for stranded inventory. And one more thing to comment about stranded inventory. If you're not finding it being stranded, it's possible that it is in the process of changing from one warehouse to another. So there is a report, and I will put the steps to get that report um, in the show notes because it is in, in the chat because it is an easy thing to look at to see if it's in reserve to somebody to buy if it's in reserve because it's doing warehouse something or other whether it's moving between warehouses people are like well it got to the warehouse already why is it moving because amazon moves its inventory to wherever their data is telling them is the most likely that people are going to buy your item so if they have an item in an atlanta warehouse but most people are buying it somewhere outside of sacramento they're going to shift the inventory from their to there so that it can be closer and they can ship it quicker. Yeah, to me, this is ludicrous. I don't know how they can afford to keep shifting all their inventory all, the, all over the place, but I guess since you have a billion dollars, billions and billions of dollars, you can do that. But anyway, there might be, you know, your item might not be for sale at the moment because they're shifting it and it shows as non available. Just don't panic. Just handle the, you have step by step instructions here. Okay, the next thing is to update keywords. So sometimes, and this is true story, this happens to me all the time, especially with new bundles. The first thing I do on a new bundle is I just let it ride for a couple of weeks and I wanna see how many sales it gets. Now I do my homework. We teach this in our wholesale bundles class to so do your homework ahead of time. How do you know your bundle's gonna sell? Well, cause I did my homework. I did all the research and I did all the keywords and so I know my bundle's gonna sell, but it doesn't mean it's gonna sell the same day. So sometimes it sits there for maybe a week and I know it's live and it's been live and I say, what's going on with that that should have uh, you know, had some traction immediately? So I'll go in and I'll look at keywords and I'll make sure that my keywords are right and that they're 
that they're hitting the nail on the head. I'll change the title. Yes, you can change the title. Sometimes you can change it right in seller in, in your inventory. And sometimes you have to submit a case to Seller Central. I have like gazillions of cases open all the time because I want my stuff the way I want it. I want to change my title. I changed my patriotic title from Memorial Day now to 4th of July because Memorial Day is over. And it's still selling. Why? Because the keyword now is 4th of July. So it's okay to do that and change the title. That's if you own the listing. I own the listing. If you don't own the listing, you can still update keywords in your back end. You will not see your fellow patrons' keywords if you didn't create the listing. It will be blank. So if you go to edit your listing, you will see keywords or search terms. I know I use keywords all the time, but in the actual listing, it's called search terms. It's under the little search term tab. And it will be blank if you did not create that. Now you can put those keywords in and start inputting them and submit that and it will go towards the back end. This is not written anywhere, but we have seen traction come from this. Yep. Um, it's something that you know, you can, it's adding to the back end in, in conversations I've had with sellers report. And I know we take that with a grain of salt one way or another, depending on which seller central rep we're talking to um, is that the back end. it's basically Amazon builds a bank of keywords for a particular listing. Um, and so, and Amazon will with its data rank keywords based on how much search they're getting. So there's a lot of things going on the back end that we don't see. Right, so making sure you're updating that or submitting a title update. If you think the title's not quite right, somebody was kind of a, you know, a little bit less keyword friendly than you want or them to Or somebody was stuck on eBay and it doesn't really make sense or, you know, there's any number of ways you can, you can perfect a listing. The top, not top, the first five keywords in your title are the most important because those are the ones that Amazon's algorithm pulls first. So if there are certain things that rank higher when you're looking at merchant words to find keywords that this one ranks higher than this, and that keyword phrase should come before the other keyword phrases. So make sure that people are finding the stuff that's there. And if they're not, you can always open a case, talk to Seller Central. I know sometimes they don't know their elbow from their nose, but <laughs> we want to make sure that we're still communicating with them because they have the power to do things that we don't like change ASINs and change titles and add the keywords and things like that. So make sure you look at the keyword and update them and use things like merchant words. I don't understand how anyone creates their own listings and bundles and things like that without merchant words. It is like gold to me. Um, one of these days we're going to interview George and he can come on here and talk to us about that. He's a very cool guy and he's, um, probably willing to come on here and tell you how Lis they are for not using it. <laughs> yeah. Listening to George speak, um, at, uh, Rocky mountain resellers last year was amazing just to watch him go through keywords. It is amazing information. If you don't know how to use keywords or don't know how to use merchant words to find keywords, I know that I had to have somebody teach me how to use merchant words when I first started using it because it felt so overwhelming. I didn't know how to process the data that it provides. Um, and so we have a mini course that actually has a couple of videos in it that walk you through the different ways you can use merchant words to find keywords, either to find keywords that people are searching on to find products to sell or to add keywords to your listing so that buyers can find them. Yeah. So that's a great thing. And it's a great, you know, for nine bucks a month, if you're building your own listings, that's a great thing. So keywords is the next one. So next we're going to move on to being consistent. So if you're seeing sales slumps, the one of the number one questions you want to ask yourself is when's the last time you shipped in inventory? What are you, how are you being consistent with shipping in product? You, you can't sell what's not there. Are you buying and then just letting it sit over in a corner somewhere and say, oh, I'll get to that. And then are you whining about sales? Because I'm talking right to you if that's what you're doing. You cannot whine about inventory that's sitting on your shelf somewhere or still in the trunk of your car or in your garage and not on the Amazon sales shelf. We know that the shopping and sourcing and all that kind of stuff is like the fun part. But if you actually want to make money, then you actually have to prep your inventory and ship it to the warehouse. So there's my soapbox for the morning. We only, we, we, morning? Is it morning? <laughs> I feel like it should be morning. I know. I need some more coffee. Right. Being consistent. And that doesn't have to be, I mean, if you are, you know, we, somebody posted in the Facebook group earlier this week, I've, I've already spent my monthly budget. 
You know, if you, it, then it becomes finding free sources of inventory. Consistent shipping leads to consistent sales. It's about feeding the beast. You see it with eBay. You see it with Amazon. The more inventory you have, the more you're going to sell. That's just not yeah. true. The more inventory you list and ship, the more inventory you're going to yes, sell. Yes, that's a better way to put it. <laughs> True though. Like, okay. So if you guys are in the Facebook group, you saw, I did a little bit of yard sailing this weekend. I actually really love to yard sale. And it's really nice now that I can do that, like actually as fun and not necessarily like I have to find inventory to sell or my business is going to die. Like that. We're not in that position. We're 99% wholesale bundles. And then I do some garage sailing and thrifting on the side only because it's fun because I love the treasure hunt. So my daughter and I went out garage sailing this weekend and you know, I spent like 30 bucks on it. 27 something on this inventory and I but I vowed to be like before I can yard sale again I have to list all this stuff whether it's eBay or Amazon my Amazon inventory my employee comes tomorrow she'll ship out all the Amazon stuff to and, and today I listed every well all four items that were supposed to be on eBay I'm like I'm not gonna let it sit here because that's my little carrot dangling above my face right like I love yard sailing in Michigan it's a season so I only get a very to go short season May through maybe the middle of October. Maybe if you're lucky, you know, you bundle up and you're like, it's cold out, but I really want a yard sale. Um, it can be beautiful too. You just never know. It's a crapshoot. Um, but I decided that I wanted to go again this weekend either. And we do our around here. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So Amy says that their place. It's only Saturday. Like Saturday morning. That's it. So that's sad. That's but, because we get a longer season than you do. Not by much, but we get a longer season. We start at the end of March and go through late October. So we get a little more time. Yeah. So there's like, this is my favorite week to go yard sailing because they have four humongous sub sales in the area where like the whole sub kind. club division like participates. So I have some subs that I always go to every year and it's just always like a gold mine. So my thing was I couldn't buy another thing until I listed the stuff I have for sale today. So I did that. I got it out of my hair and, you know, did that or whatever. But that's the thing is that it's not going to sell itself. You guys have to ship your inventory in and be consistent. Schedule it if you have to. Yeah, if you are doing Amazon as a side hustle and you're like, I don't have time to ship it in. I, I run out of time by the end of the week. Put it on your calendar just like you would a doctor's appointment or any other thing. Say this hour, this three-hour chunk is going to be my processing time. And in that time, that's what I'm going to focus on. Um, we are much better if we have something scheduled out than if we just kind of let it hang over there as something that we'll get to eventually. It happens for folding laundry. It happens for washing dishes. It happens for all sorts of different household projects. It also happens with your Amazon business. So <laughs> put it on your calendar. Yes, I have to put folding laundry on my calendar because I despise folding laundry. Oh, laundry is my enemy, however. And my summer. laundry folding girl. I have a girl who comes and does work for me for my Amazon business, but when I don't have enough for her to do, she folds my laundry. It's in softball season right now, so I don't have my laundry folder right now. When she comes back, she's going to help me fold my laundry again. <laughs> for real. I'm telling you what. You know, I love summer laundry, though, because summer laundry is a lot lighter, and it's t-shirts and tank tops and not, like, sweatshirts. It doesn't and take up as much not money. like as many loads right so anyway that's another thing about being consistent schedule it I don't want to hear I love you you know and that's like I love you and I'm gonna tell you this I have people we have people we have clients and group members that are working a nine-to-five and then some 60 hours a week and yet they carve out two or three hours a week two or three hours a week to build their Amazon business and a couple of them are absolutely killing it and you, you would never know in six months that they can be making 10 grand a month, like almost replacing their nine to five. This is possible and you don't have to have 50 hours a week to do it. You just have to set your mind to be like, okay, Saturday morning at 7 a.m. before anybody gets up or what for your household, it might be 5 a.m. I don't know. But when no one, before anybody gets up, I'm going to spend one hour processing inventory or, you know, I won't use the tape gun until nine o'clock, whatever it is. But <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like you have to put it down. You have to decide that this is worth it to you and then actually doing it. The treasure hunting is fun. Great. Every business has something that's probably fun to do. And we always leave the yucky tasks like for another time. Well, the time is now. Um, so 
be consistent, ship every ship on a schedule. I'm not going to tell you to ship on a specific schedule. I would like to see people shipping once a week. That's when you can really see by the time your stuff gets there, it gets checked in, gets ready to go live, is live, then you're going to already be shipping something else in. Make it a habit to ship every week if you can. If not, I'll give you two weeks at the very maximum. Yeah, Unless you're shipping like thousands of dollars at a time, then maybe. Now, if you are struggling to be accountable to get that stuff done, um, come to the Facebook group. Kristen actually just posted a paste, p- p- posted today in the group asking what people are working on this week so that we can come back on Friday and say, hey, how are you doing on this? How did you, what did you do to accomplish that? Were you able to be successful in that? And we can help you and the other members of the group can help you hit those goals. If you are struggling, accountability is a great way to help you move forward. Baby steps, little tiny steps are still steps. It doesn't matter how big or how small. Yeah, and Amy and I are living proof of that. What you see here every week on YouTube and on our live show was built by baby steps. Do you realize that, like, what, two months ago, there was no such thing as show notes? We didn't have them, and now we do, because we just took little baby steps to take that extra step to give you guys an extra special download so that you could have some show notes, because you're not going to remember everything we say in an hour, and jotting down notes, maybe you're walking the dog, maybe you're listening to it on your morning commute once you, once it gets on YouTube. It, you know, the show notes are just something maybe, to help you remember. Maybe you're processing a shipment while you're listening to us. Hopefully. <laughs> so that's the thing is that this is all built on baby steps. We didn't start out of the gate just, you know, flying and, um, you know, having all these things. It's that we, we just tell you guys what we do. We tell you what works for us and what's been working for us. It's like it's show notes plus it's, you know, baby steps. And we're, we actually just unveiled a brand new big project that we've been wanting to do for a while and it's coming together and it's going to be, but it's also like not only a side hustle, but a side, side, side hustle. <laughs> so we have to de- dedicate just a small amount of time, but every week we schedule this time and say at this time and this day, we're going to work on this. So this is the same thing that you guys can do. Okay. Moving on to the next leg of slow sales slump avoidance is analyzing your long-term inventory. And this is a couple of things that this does for you. Um, if you've had something sitting in there for six months, there are, well, you'll have long-term storage fees coming up in August, but you still have monthly storage fees on every single item that you have in your inventory. If you have an item in there that's oversized, it's an even higher fee. I mean, Amazon storage fees are not huge this time of year. They are come Q4, but it still adds up. If you were going to be making $3 profit on an item and you've had it in there and it's like every month that it's in there, it's chipping away at your profit. It's not as profitable six months in as it was the day you sent it in. Right. You've got, and and you got to start thinking about long-term inventory. If you're working on six months of something being there, you have to ask yourself why. It doesn't mean you don't have inventory sitting there for longer than six months. Sometimes the long-term storage fee is worth it. So think about the, uh, the, why an item's not selling. Look at it. Is the supply and demand off whack? Did you buy it at a time where everybody else was buying the same thing and now the price is lower and no one wants it anymore? And is it seasonal? Is it uh, the rank has gone down or the price has gone down or maybe it's gone up too much and then you can't be competitive? Whatever it is, look at your long-term inventory. We're talking things that are pushing six months or over and analyze it. Do some math. Yes, I said math. Don't gulp. Don't choke. Don't cry. Um, do a little bit of math and just be like, okay, the, the, the short-term storage fees is this and this and this. If you have a $100 item sitting there and you're paying – a a dollar fifty a month to store it at Amazon until Q4. That's worth it. If you have a ten dollar item and you're paying two dollars every month to ship it, you've lost all your profit already. It's time for it to go bye bye. Have you guys seen the Let Go commercials where like the doctor, the surgeon's wearing this like ab belt that like vibrates and he's getting ready to cut someone's face open and they're like, it's time to let go of this item. Like, that's how I feel about your inventory. Like, don't marry it. This is not a marriage. This is a very fluid thing. It's like, 
get see the inventory look and see if it's still selling if it still has legs and it's just not moving because it's seasonal if it's just not the right time or something like that you don't have to cut it loose but if it's just one of those price tanks there's 312 sellers on the same thing it was last year's hot toy and it is now june it's time to say goodbye cut it loose donate it we have other ideas to do things with your inventory in order to do that. That's like our next point it leads right into that. It does. Now, I know what it feels like. I know you spent money on that inventory, which is why we're going to talk about different ways that we can take that inventory and repurpose it. And I'm not saying bringing back all the granola bars and eating them. I've done <laughs> that. Trust me. <laughs> I have done fruit. Uh, when I did grocery and expiration dates for looming, I ate way too many granola bars and fruit snacks. There's a reason I don't do grocery anymore. I was done with expiration dates. But, you know, I'm not saying you have to like eat all your inventory. There's <laughs> other things that you can do with your inventory to actually make it sellable again. Yes. So thinking about number one, of course, we're the bundle queens. And so we think about looking at that dead inventory thinking as a single unit, this thing really has tanked and it's not a good seller. There's no profit in it. What do I do with this thing? Well, you recall it and you think about what else you could maybe bundle it with. I mean, not everything is bundleable. Is that even a word? Mm -hmm. um, bundleable. Not everything you can bundle, but if you can think about what might go with it. Is there an accessory? Is there a, uh, a cord, an extra cord? Cord you could buy for something or extra pieces or anything like that that you could bundle with it like I saw somebody brilliantly bundle like um, a Yahtzee game with a whole like stack of like the Yahtzee papers now some people like me who are really cheap just make copies at my house and then I just have them all the time but um, our other favorite game to play is wizard and wizard has like this tiny 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 like scorecard and we blow them up and write them bigger because we are old and can't <laughs> So with those, but that's something you could sell extra. You could, um, you know, buy the extra pad somewhere and sell it together. Like, you know, Yahtzee itself might not be selling well, but I thought that's a great idea. What else can you bundle with the items to recall it? Also sell on other platforms. You could always try to ditch it on eBay or you can bring it home and sell it at your yard sale, or you could donate it to the local pet shelter or the homeless shelter, or, you know, just different places you could be there's all kinds of places that will take your or you can sell it at a consignment sale if you sell kids or baby stuff I when I was heavy into toys I would pull stuff back and at my local consignment sale every year I would dump inventory um you, you know it was I would dump inventory and then reinvest money and spend it the, the consignment sale to buy more inventory to sell at Amazon because there were other people there not dumping inventory but dumping old presents that were Right. And, you know, if you have those up, um, Amy will post the link. It's called Just Between Friends. I think it's nationwide. They only have one in my area once a year, but in her area, it's a lot bigger because that's kind of where it started. So look for these things. Look for consignment sales if you sell kids stuff or, you know, community yard sales where you can rent a table for 20 bucks, pay a teenager to sit there for six hours and run your sale. And, you know, it's some is better than none. I like the some is better than none approach. Sometimes I just donate it and get rid of it. But sometimes I'm like, oh, I could sell this here, here, or here. Or I could just give it, you know, just, you know, however you get rid of your duds. So think about these things um, and think about how you can repurpose those things. Also, don't forget to repurpose seasonal stuff. I know a lot of people think, oh, Christmas stuff, once it's gone, it's gone. It's never going to sell all year. Outdoor lighting is an absolute huge thing. So here's your bolo for Christmas time. Stock up the day after Christmas on all kinds of lights. Christmas lights and outdoor it, people use them for weddings and they use them for all kinds of things and you can sometimes get them for 50 cents a box so repurpose think outside of your normal realm of how you can repurpose certain inventory for certain things yeah there are so many different ways that you can take inventory and reuse it um, and don't think that you have to be stuck because you don't and it's it, being married to your inventory is one thing. I get it. Been there, done that. And you get to a point where you just have to say, done. I, my $500 wholesale purchase that was a total flop and I didn't sell any of, 
I finally pulled back. I probably, I know I lost money because I spent money to send it to Amazon. I spent money to bag it. All of that, all those things, there was lost money in it. But there was more time I spent trying to figure out how I was going to sell and deal with all of this stuff that it was taking away from other parts of my business. So by releasing that, I all of a sudden had this free brain space to actually put towards more profitable aspects of my business. Right. So this is in a long-term relationship. This is a, hey, this doesn't work out. You're going to have to realize that in real, in, in uh, retail, you're in retail, you're selling stuff. You're not married to it or, or don't be that guy, right? Don't be the one that like, literally you have it at your garage sale. It's been sitting in there for 20 years and someone like me comes along and wants to offer you a little bit less for it. And they're like, no, no, no. These are selling for way more than that nowadays or whatever. Okay, well, you sell it on eBay then because I'm not going to pay a retail price for it. You know, right. the people that are like emotionally attached or if you ever watch like American Pickers where the people are like, no, I just can't sell that yet. They have 500 barns full of stuff and they're, you know, getting older and their kids are like, please sell the stuff so I don't have to deal with it. This is real, you guys. So, so don't marry your inventory. What is it worth to you? Um, if it's worth that much to you, then recall it and put it on your shelf and like look at it as like a collectible. Otherwise, it's not in the family. It can be let go. So for all, by all means, let go of dead inventory. Don't dwell on it. It's not worth losing money over just to make the sale in a couple months. You could just get rid of it and move on. And like the Amy said, clear that brain space to move on for something else. Okay. Now, this is, you know, long-term inventory and dealing with dead inventory are something that you have control over. And there are other things that you can do in the midst of a sales slump that you have control over. You don't have control over who decides to buy your item. You can make your listing better. You can do all that stuff to make it so that it's more appealing to buyers, but you can't actually make somebody hit that buy it now button. But right. there are things that you do have control over. Yeah, there's things that you can do while you wait for sales to pick up. Uh, see items one, two, and three firsthand. You know, checking your listings, shipping consistently no matter what. Now, I understand if it's like, well, I'm waiting for my deposit, but I'm not getting a deposit, so I can't ship new inventory in. Um, there's ways to get free inventory. We actually did a show on that like probably a year or so ago, but there are different ways to get free inventory. There's tap into those family and friends, especially my direct sales people. If you've ever sold anything direct sales, like I know Julie was here and she's the it works girl and we have Rodan and fields and we have Norwex and we have Tupperware tap into those direct sales and call up those friends and family and be like, I'm still trying to ramp up my Amazon business. And I'm wondering if you have anything laying around the house, I can kind of scan and see if I can sell it help me out in my business and see how many people are like, sure, you're going to come over here and haul it away so that I don't even have to take it to the, the Salvation Army or the thrift shop. Okay. Um, most people are more than willing to help you. There's books people throw in dumpsters, people to, you know, just use your scanner, use your Amazon seller app and start finding free inventory. There's lots of places to find it. You need to know where to look. Right. So here's the whole thing with that. You know, you're, you do multi-level marketing, you are selling whatever it is that you're selling. And the first place you go to help you start your business is to your family and friends. So you can do the same exact thing with your Amazon business, except I actually look at it as a benefit to the people. It's like, I don't, they don't put money out of pocket to buy whatever thing you're selling. They are getting a clean closet. They're getting stuff off their shelves so that they can go take, you know, fill it with whatever else they want to fill it, but they gain space back. Yes, absolutely. And you're creating that, that win-win for them because you're saying here, I'm offering this. You can even do it on consignment to where you're like, okay, if you've got stuff you'd like to sell, um, then we'll split it 50, 50. I will do the work for this and I, you're not putting any money up front and neither are they. So that's places to get free inventory. So don't, don't, there's where there's a will, there's a way. I promise you that there are lots of things that I've been challenged to do in the past six months that I would probably be still crying about if I wasn't forced to do such things forced meaning in the nicest possible way forced. <laughs> um, but still like we have to get over those hurdles. If we always stay in this little comfort zone all the time and just kind of, I don't know what to do and making excuses. That's all you'll ever have. You can either make excuses or get results and it's up to you which one it is. So I know I'm trying to be, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to be helpful because it's true. 
Like we all need a kick in the pants sometimes and don't make excuses about not having money in order to do your business. You can find ways. You have to be brave. It's not, you know, that's one thing you're going to have to be. You have to be brave. You're going to have to put on your big girl panties and be like, okay, I'm going to ask somebody, uh, friends and family, if they have anything I can sell for them on Amazon and we can split it 50 50 or outright ask them. You know, they might think that's rude. Um, some people think it's rude for you to constantly send them postcards about your direct sales businesses. So there's that. <laughs> um, don't worry about them. Worry about how you're going to offer it to them to help them. Okay. There are going back to sales slumps. You are, there are things that you can do in the meantime while you wait for sales to pick back up after you've done everything else we've said. So those, these are in order of appearance. Like these are the things you do first, second, third, fourth. This is getting towards the end, towards the bottom. Do something else while you're waiting instead of panic, instead of freak out, instead of worry that your business is dying and nothing's ever going to happen for you. So back end tasks is your first one on your list. And guess what? You can actually make money by doing your back end tasks. If you have a Amazon business and you've been at it for longer than three months, um, then you, Amazon owes you money. And by completing your back end tasks, like asking for return reimbursement or damaged items and reimbursements and things like that, or when they lose an entire shipment, that's worth $1,500. Um, being able to go in and ask for those things and opening the cases, all of a sudden you're going to land inventory dollars back in your pocket by taking the time to go through your back end tests. We're actually going to be doing an entire show on that next week. So stay Indeed. tuned. If you do not know how to manage your back end administrative tasks for your Amazon business, we're going to be talking more in depth about that next week on the June 12th show. Yes, June 12th. We're very excited about that because there was some demand in our group to kind of know, like, I know Debbie had said something about, hey, I got X amount of dollars back from looking at my old inventory reports and like, like looking for all this money and all of a sudden you, you found $400. Well, this happens to us regularly. The more you sell, the more Amazon's going to screw up, the more there's errors. And guess what? Just like we said at the beginning of the show, they're not going to volunteer you all the mess ups that they've made and hand you a check. You have to go knocking on their door and say, hi, remember me? You screwed up my order and I want my money back. They're not going to come to you. You have to come to them. And a lot of people, especially newbies, don't know how to do this. They don't know how to find the reports. They don't know how to make the claims. They don't know how to send all this stuff in. We're going to be teaching you an actionable step next week, and we're going to actually be able to show you how you can get some of your money back, and we're also going to have an offer for you for you to learn all this stuff on your own so that you can do it, or you can have your 12-year-old do it, or you can hire a VA to do it, or whatever it is. Or your you 6 year old need. mom to do it. Yes, you need to be doing this. This is me in your face telling you, I love you, but get your money back from Amazon. They are hoarding your money. You are sitting on old returns that never got returned. You're sitting on <coughs> damaged items. You're sitting on all this money that, I mean, for you, if you've only been in business a few months, it might be only 20 bucks, but then tell me you can't buy inventory with 20 bucks. I just spent 2750 this weekend at garage sales and I'm selling it for over $300. Yes. Truth moment. This is truth. This is exactly what happened. $27.50 is turning into over $300, $350. I it just, you know, it doesn't happen every single weekend like that, but most of the time that's usually my haul. You know, some, there's some college textbooks in here and other stuff. So you can make money with $27. All right. So the next one, and we preach on this and it's not because we want to be preachy. because it's how you find products to sell. And that's research. Research is the key to having a successful business on Amazon. It's understanding the market. It's understanding trends. Um, we've talked about use, utilizing Google Trends. There are so many different ways you can be looking for the next things to buy, wholesale opportunities, new product opportunities. I used to scan grocery store shelves when I'd go grocery shopping to see what the newest products were that were landing that I could bring to the, the, to the market before Amazon even got on them or other sellers. Like that was my goal. I want to find one brand new something that I can bring to the market with every grocery shopping trip. So doing right. your research. Do the research, you guys. If you don't know how to research, guess what? We have a class on that too. Why? Because for two and a half years, all we've been doing is helping other Amazon sellers get to where we are. Ask Amy two years ago if she thought she would have the business she has today. No. <laughs> I, if, if you had told me I would be doing six figures and growing at a rapid rate, 
I would have laughed in Kristen's face. Yeah. It was hard enough for Kristen to convince me to spend $350 to buy a scan fob. Yeah. This, this is real, you guys. This is us being as real as we can. We're not just like in this guru space, like pretending to be Amazon sellers or not just like we're in the grind and we're in the hustle with you. And we've done this and we've been where you are. I've been to the point where uh, my sales slumped so bad that I actually went into the negative at one point because uh, my fees were more than um, my fees were more than than the amount that was coming in from sales. And part of it was due to the fact that we couldn't ship anything in for two weeks, all the stuff. We've been in those places. But what I'm saying is we're living proof that this stuff happens. We smash excuses because we want what we want. We have built a lifestyle that we love by selling on Amazon and we love it. Um, hi, six figures, Tom. Thanks for asking. Your, your question was to all panels, but um, uh, we have combined businesses of over a million dollars and we're just shooting up from there. We have... <laughs> The next thing that we're going to talk about too, which is also um, don't putting all your eggs in one basket. Um, and for those that are curious, I know you guys are curious out there. You hear gurus, you hear people all the time going, oh, seven figure business, all this kind of stuff. There's a reason that I'm not a, the, a million dollar seller right now. It's because I don't want to be. Because I like to take baby steps to put things into place. A million dollar business requires a lot of overhead that I'm not sure I want. I'm very comfortable with where my sales are right now. Am I still growing? Yes, because I can't help it. <laughs> um, but I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that to like everybody always has this lofty goal of like you're not somebody if you don't make a million dollars. I don't need a million dollar business to be comfortable. I am comfortable. I'm, I'm happy with my business. I'm happy with my business growth. And and our goal, while Amazon currently is our main source of income, it's not our end goal. Amazon is what pays the bills. Amazon is what is moving us there. Our goal is to help a million people. And through Mommy Income, through Entrepreneur on a Dime, that is our goal. Um, I'm working with a minister right now who is working to build his Amazon business so he can support an orphanage in Uganda. Like helping people across the world, I want to help people learn how to do what we do and have the success that we've had so they can go out in the world and help more people. It's that whole pay it forward thing. We want to help you grow your Amazon business so that you can continue to touch the lives of the people that you are involved with. And even if that's your immediate family, I mean, Amy came across that and like, we're going to get to be a part of somebody building an Amazon business so that they can support orphans in Uganda. Like we don't know them, but we know this pastor who's going to know them, who's going to support this. Like he, he's not asking for a handout. He's saying, help me build this business so I can support these kids halfway across the world. It, that's whatever it is that your big dream is or your big goal is or whatever it is. Like don't get yourself caught up on, I have to be, you know, a million dollar seller or whatever else. Like I don't want to pay for warehouse space or a warehouse manager and all that kind of stuff. And I, I've got about as maxed out amount of space as I'm going to get here. So I think I'm just going to kind of ride this wave right now. And so it's just one of those things like set your goals and think about the bigger picture and do research and then do some more research and then do some more research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, that goes for not just, you know, talking about the putting, not putting all your eggs in one basket, um, having multiple streams of income, which is something that Kristen and I have been doing for a long time. Um, I did not start off in the eBay, Amazon space. I started off doing a variety of other different things from wedding invitation design to extreme couponing. So I've done it all. <laughs> it still <laughs> makes me laugh. <laughs> I used to dumpster dive for coupons. I did, I did crazy things. Um, but being able to, and Kim talked about this last week where they've got other side incomes as well. It's protection against if Amazon, something happens to Amazon. Um, it's also allows you to diversify and do things that we get to teach every week. We get to do something that we're passionate about and help others, um, which it's one more step towards meeting that goal of helping a million people. You know, that's one additional step there. So is there something you're passionate about that you can, you know, start an eBay store so you can support something? Is there somebody that you can help move along the way? Um, Monica Busby is doing amazing things with helping kids become entrepreneurs. Absolutely. There's so many people around us that are, you know, that are doing, you know, amazing, great things. You know, it's just about what, what is your, 
reason and your why. And then that's the thing is that honestly, all the millionaire people out there, any articles you read, anything like that will always, always, always tell you multiple streams of income to offset slow times. So maybe this is a really slow month for Amazon, but your niche in eBay happens to be, you know, summer toys. Well, you're hitting the jackpot then for the summer while everyone else is kind of whining about slow sales. What about merch by Amazon? Are you a designer? Do you know how to design shirts? Are you good at looking at trends or picking up on, you know, snarky teenage sayings that they want to wear on t-shirts? Well, you know, there's that. And there's also things like let go and offer up and Craigslist, eBay, Etsy, Mercari, flea markets, garage sales, uh, Facebook, uh, buy, sell, trade, yard sale groups. There's a million ways, I swear, to sell product online and offline. Um, so out with the excuses. If you want to make money hustling from home and want to be an entrepreneur, the sky is the limit. It's all about you limiting yourself and getting out of your comfort zone and saying, okay, I know Julie's in here or she was in the audience for a while. Um, I spoke to Julie personally lots of times and she, she does her, you know, she's they've paying off their debt. She's doing Amazon. She's doing it work. She's probably doing four other things. And you know what? In a year, two years from now, Julie's going to be like, yeah, I made a million dollars by doing it five, ten different ways. This is how people do this. It's not just all or nothing Amazon. There are some people that will tell you that. Put all your money where the money is now and only jump ship if something happens. Um, it can work both ways, but do you. And however you do that, do it in multiple different ways. You all have multiple skill sets and you can learn new things. You don't have to be afraid of them. Um, so offset your slow times with multiple income streams. Yeah. Learn new things. We all have the ability to learn. I mean, you're here right now listening to this show, learning something new. You know, if you take one golden nugget away from this one thing that you learned, um, you're, you've enriched your knowledge bank towards helping you with something else down the road. And let me tell you something right now. This is, I, I'm not going to tell you, I could tell I can name all of them, but I can also tell you that this is Amy and I, okay. We just don't quit. We have Amazon, we have eBay, um, I, and merch. So those are our three, you know, product sales. I also sell on Mercari. We do mommy income course creation. And of course this wonderful live show for you every week. And we're actually adding another thing that we're doing um, that's going to be coming around in September. So yes, we're adding to our plate of multiple ways to um, reach the world. We can't reach a million people just by this alone. We have to branch out a little bit. And so um, we're working on all these multiple side hustles and things like that. So um, all that to say that you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket during slow times. Use that to brainstorm some other things that you can maybe get started. I know that seems a little nuts, but baby steps are key. Write them down and say, for 15 minutes, I'm working on this and then I'm done. In 15 minutes, adds up and adds up and adds up. And pretty soon you've started a whole brand new something that you did 15 minutes at a time. So making sure that you know that. And lastly, absolute lastly. Yeah. Sorry, I had to go there. I know. If you have to, if we even have to mention this, if you have to, um, stay competitive with your prices, but don't panic. So look at keep a keep a keep a in camel camel camel. Look at the price history of your item and stay competitive, but don't stay broke. People who lower 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 prices stay broke. They they might have a million dollars in sales, but they don't have a million dollars in profit. So make sure you're paying attention to your pricing and make sure you're staying competitive. Yeah, and being able to understand what that break even point is for the items that you're selling. Um, one of the things that I do when I do my um, merchant SKU is I add in my break even point so that I have the ability to know where that item is. If I have to drop my price, I don't want to drop it below that because if I do, Amazon is, I'm paying Amazon to sell that like in like over the top, not just paying regular fees. I'm actually like, they're taking more money than I'm. Yeah. Anyway, don't go there. Um, so and that's all part of, we talk about this all the time. Understand your numbers, know where you are. We see, I mean, you see target drop prices to 70% off on clearance. Yeah. That you can do that. But the better part is to do the things that we've talked about in this show. That's a drastic measure. They have to worry about shelf space in a retail brick and mortar store. You don't. 
All right. So I'm going to show you something really quick because I know we went by that really fast and some of you guys are brand new or even brand new to mommy income. So you don't know this. Amy and I build custom SKUs. And although we do it differently, this is the general idea. When you're entering in something into Amazon, you can build a custom SKU. And here is kind of the source we do it. There's date, there's the source. In other words, where you bought it from, the price of the item. So you paid $1.50, you put 1.5 in there. I put the sales rank at the time of, of listing it and then BEP, which is a break even point. So you know Amazon fees plus your item is your break even point so that you can always look at your SKU when you're in your price grid in Amazon. You can see right away, here's your item, here's your SKU. This is the most valuable piece of information in your listing that you can possibly have. Build custom SKUs every single time. Because you can snapshot, look at that item and say, oh, my break even point is $2.99 and this one's selling at $7.85 minus the fees. I'm already at break, in, break even point at this, at this point. So build your SKU however it works for you. This is what works for me. Amy's got her own little method of what she does. It's the same, it's the same Concept. It's the same details in different order. That's all. Um, Diane asked a question um, about break even and what break even is. Break even is when you have your fees, how much the item cost you. When you add those up, that amount is the bottom of the barrel what you will take for that item because you'll recoup everything you invested in it. Yeah. Okay. Tammy just asked us if we offer PayPal as an option. Um, I'm not sure if PayPal is an option showing up in Kajabi, but um, we can always send you an invoice. So if you want to pay by PayPal, we'll figure it out. Right. If you are interested in buying a course and you want to pay with PayPal, um, contact us at admin at mommyincome.com and we can make that happen for you. Um, it is not currently active on our course platform, but it will be soon. Yes. Yeah, so we have to, everything like intertwines together. You've got credit card processing through this and F PayPal and Kajabi and blah, 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 all this stuff like weaves together and some people are slow at joining the party. So um, a PayPal is a little bit slower in joining the party. They're kind of like, I have a tight grip on, they want people to go through their channels and not, you know, whatever they're, they're getting with the program. So yeah, don't let that be a stopping block. If you want to buy something from us and you want to pay PayPal and it's not one of the options, just ask. You know, we could always make, you know, if you want, you can send me paper money in the mail if you want to. Like, I mean, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> I don't That's prefer going back that. to the old ages of eBay back when you had to wait for a check before you shipped your item. Could you imagine the check fraud they probably ran into? Okay, oh, so um, that's uh, so that's what I mean. Building a custom SKU. <clears throat> that was like a freebie, you know, but that's something that everybody should know. Um, if you're selling on Amazon and you're listing, you build your own custom SKU for stuff, and then you have information right at your fingertips to make decisions like that. So you have your break-even point. And your break-even point, how you figure that out, is really your cost plus Amazon fees equals your break-even. And so you can look at that when you're putting stuff in, and it'll almost tell you um, later on like what the break-even point is or you can put it in to the Amazon FBA calculator and it'll basically you can mess with the prices until you see your break-even do some simple math and it will show you you know if you're paying a dollar fifty for something and the fees are 472 you know that's that plus that equals your break-even and then anything over that is profit sometimes you go lower than your break-even because you just want to get rid of the dang thing so you know you but at least you have that in your head of you know what your break-even is so that's the very last thing you do. I know most people are like, go in, cut prices, don't think about anything, just make quick sales. Um, sometimes you raise your price. Raise it. Yep. Because do you realize that Amazon actually likes to make money too? And the more something costs, the more Amazon fees they take. Um, they're pretty smart over there at Amazon. They kind of know how to make money. So they might give you more of the buy box if you're if it's super competitive. If it's not as competitive and you raise your price by $2, you're still sharing the buy box, not with 300 people, but you're going to still share the buy box. I know there's this crazy percentage of like, if you're not within 2% of the buy box, you're never going to get it. Um, mess with your price until you land there and do it last after all these things. And you also, the other, we, we see people doing this with bundles specifically, um, is pricing it too, it too low to start. You have to remember that people on Amazon are about wanting what, like, they're about convenience, not about best price. They want it now. And so having 
the item priced too low, they're going to think, ah, bad quality. I don't want to go there. I don't want to have to deal with returns and all of that. So price it a little bit higher and see where it goes. And can we get an amen for Michelle over here in the chat who says she just raised her price last week and sold the remaining stock for $8 more per unit. Raising prices works because of perceived value sometimes. People are like, oh, this bundle's only $14.99. Uh-uh, I'm starting it at $29.99 because you can always go lower, but you can always go higher too if you want. So just remember that. Keep these things in mind. We are here to help you. We are here to, you know, if you're really legit having some major problems and you've done all these things and you still feel like you're having issues, we'd love to talk to you about those things. So make sure that you reach out to us and join the Facebook group if you're not in it. It is free, but you have to bring us code words and, you know, stuff like that. Why? Because we like to keep it legit in there. We want to know that you're interested in Amazon. It's not just another Facebook group you want to join, but if you like what you hear here and you want to um, talk to us and, and we're there every single day answering questions and all these lovely folks here are also there um, answering questions for you, real legit sellers answering and helping each other and holding each other accountable and all that jazz. So yep. we call work slow. So head over to mommyincome.com slash join us with the code word slow and we will give you the details to get into our group. You cannot search it on Facebook. So um, getting in through that avenue is going to be your best bet. Yes, it is private and special and not always for everyone to just join. We don't have 10,000 members for a reason. We try to keep it smaller and more actionable and all that. So, so that we can help hold you accountable like we talked about. Now, we are super excited to be bringing you next week's show. We, as we said earlier, we are going to be digging into administrative tasks that can bring the money back into your pocket that Amazon owes you. So Absolutely. make sure you tune in live so you can get all of the details of how you can do that for your Amazon business. And just because I know that a lot of people listen to on YouTube. So if you're hearing this on YouTube, coming live is a benefit. You can actually ask us questions that we answer live for you. If they're relevant to the topic, we get to them, we answer you, we talk to you. Um, there is a benefit to coming live. So if you're watching this, and you're like, oh, I can never make the live show Monday night at nine, 9 p.m. Eastern, write it on your calendar, come live. And there's usually some sort of special goodie, something that we give our live viewers that not everybody gets their hands on. So, um, you know, you're going to miss out on some of the live stuff if you are not here live because we do edit some of this and take some of it out that you don't even know you're missing because you're not here. So come live and we would love to see you next Monday night. We're going to teach you some stuff to get your money back from Amazon and you're going to be really happy that you watched. So we'll see you again next week. Thanks everyone. We'll see you in the Facebook group as well.